The Ecuador and Confederations of Indigenous Nationality rejects President Lasso's accusations linking drug trafficking groups with the national strike. And in Argentina, some 200 tourists and transporters remain stranded at a border crossing in Mendoza due to a snowstorm. Sri Lanka's political parties agreed to form an interim government while new elections are held. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. The Ecuadorian Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities described as absurd the accusations of President Guillermo Lasso, who linked the protest to drug trafficking groups. In a statement, the organization assured that the accusations of the head of state revealed his lack of knowledge about the reality and forms of organization of indigenous peoples. They confirmed that President Lasso's neoliberal principles of education prevent him from understanding that not all plans and projects need the mediation of money to be carried out. Also, it states that his accusations question and jeopardize the progress achieved for dialogue and negotiations besides criminalizing the right to protest. On Saturday, in order to guarantee Bolivia's food security and sovereignty, President Luis Arce signed a contract for the construction of a granulated fertilizer production plant. The project, which should be completed in less than a year in Cochabamba City, will be a pillar for food production and nutrition of the land to raise the quality of agricultural and forestry products. The head of state recalled that the current food crisis in the world does not have to affect Bolivia and affirmed that measures have been taken for years to ensure that no crisis threatens Bolivian security. Bolivia is a country like few others in the world. It has everything. It has nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, which are among other components the most necessary to revitalize Mother Earth. In this eagerness to produce more and more, we have to feed Mother Earth so that in turn it fulfills its function of feeding us with a greater productivity based on fertilizers made with national raw material and material that is Bolivian. This need was raised to the economic cabinet. Quickly the preliminary studies began to be made in the first months of our government because today we are already signing the contract for the production of the plant that we all need at this point. Due to changes in electoral law, Brazil now has the highest number of Afro-Brazilian city councillors in its history, but racist politicians aligned with President Bolsonaro are doing everything they can to remove them from office. From Brazil, our correspondent Brian Mir has the details. In 2020, the Brazilian Supreme Court ruled that political parties must divide campaign funds equally with black candidates. This has led to a dramatic increase in black city councillors and mayors, but across the country, racist right-wing politicians have been fighting to remove them from office. These mandates, which are being persecuted and threatened, were won legitimately by the power of the people, by people who believe in social transformation. So it is really sad to see that our political action is being restricted because this society, which is still racist, doesn't accept our, our presence. Curitiba City Councilor Renato Freitas was arbitrarily arrested twice since taking office in 2021. Last month he was impeached by the majority white city council for participating in a protest against racism that ended inside of a historically black church. However, a judge just ruled that the city council has violated due process and reinstated him to office. The truth is always on the side of the oppressed. The truth is revolutionary, and I feel that in my case, the truth has been completely re-established. The court ruling was a victory for the rule of law, but across Brazil, hundreds of Afro-Brazilian city councillors are facing similar arbitrary impeachment processes launched by allies of far-right President Jair Bolsonaro. Brian Mir, Telesur, Recife. 
Sources from the Ministry of Defense in Colombia confirmed the death of eight alert FARC dissidents in Caqueta, in the south of the country. The events occurred in the middle of the operation carried out by Colombian armed forces deploying the rural area bordering Caqueta and Guaviere. Precisely at that exact spot, the eight dissidents of FARC's fourth front, four men and four women, not yet identified, were killed. According to the military report reproduced in several national media, the structure would be under the command of IKA Ivan Mordisco name by which guerrilla fighter Nestor Gregorio Vera is known. According to the report, arms and ammunition were seized during the operation. Hours before disclosing the information, the Minister of Defense, Diego Molano, announced news about these events. Panamanian trade union organizations are preparing for an intense day of protest. On Saturday, several trade union organizations, popular and professional unions, announced a roadmap despite the invitation of the national executive to convene a meeting. Those calling for these mobilizations are demanding a general wage increase, freezing and reducing the high prices of fuel, food and medicines. In addition, they announced a 48-hour warning stoppage, while trade actions are intensifying at national level. According to the National Confederation of Independent Unity, the actions must lead to nation the national government to listen to the voice of the people and workers in view of the serious crisis that the country is going through. Regarding the conflict, the Vice President of the Broad Front for Democracy, Mary Bell Gordon, called on the executive to hold a public debate on the problems affecting the country. We challenge the government and the businessmen to discuss on equal terms in a public debate broadcasted at national level to debate the proposals but to give us answers about corruption, about those payrolls in the leg legislative and executive branches with the business sector. We want to discuss with the business sector because where there is corrupted, there are corruptors, and we also want to discuss these issues. We want to discuss with the business sector the fact that they are being given taxes, our taxes. The government of Guatemala informed that so far this year it has captured 15 individuals requested for extradition by the United States for drug trafficking crimes. According to a spokesman of the National Civil Police, Guatemala authorities captured 57 individuals requested for extradition to the United States in 2021, and so far this year, 2022, there are already 21 extraditable individuals to the United States. The last one arrested was a Guatemalan man. Carlindo David Vargas Fuentes, 66, 65 years old, who was handed over last Friday to the authorities in the municipality of Tecunumán, Department of San Marcos. At the beginning of May, drug trafficker Juan Luis Ortiz López, nephew of drug lord Juan Alberto Ortiz, known as Chamale, who was extradited in 2011, was also captured. So far, there is a total of 15 arrested out of the 21 extraditable for 2022. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Uh, welcome back to From the South. At least 200 people were reported stranded on the border between Argentina and Chile due to a snowstorm in the mountainous zone with temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Local authorities said another 120 people have been rescued during the early hours of Sunday morning by police and military personnel in the localities of Las Cuevas, Los Penitentes and Puente del Inca at an altitude of more than 3,000 meters in the Andean foothills. Likewise, officials stressed that during the rescue, several road trucks had to clear the routes to allow the rescue of the evacuees and move them to the shelters in Punta de Vacas and Uspallata. Security forces also added that vehicles are trapped by the snowfall that has accumulated more than one meter of snow. In Cuba, President Miguel Diaz Canal together Army General Raul Castro Ruz reviewed the progress of Mariel's Special Development Zone. Together with other members of the executive branch and those responsible for the projects, the revolutionary leaders reviewed the construction and plans in the zone. The project located in the west of Havana is considered the most important economic site with the greatest future on the island. Therefore, the executive performs checkups in the area every month. Currently, 21 countries and 11 multinationals are involved in the project, which already generates more than 15,000 jobs. President Diaz-Canel insists 
on the need for every new investment in Mariel to include the generation of renewable energy sources. Ana Teresa Igarza, General Director of the Special Development Zone, explained the business program with Pillar Industries under the perspective mentioned by the head of state. The forms of investment that have the predominated the most are those of full foreign capital because they see the area as an attractive place for their establishment, a modality that previously was not visibly established. There are 16 mixed companies and more than 15,000 jobs have been generated. There is a presence of 21 countries and 11 multinationals. Japan's Conservative Coalition government was projected to increase its majority in the upper house of parliament in an election on Sunday, two days after the assassination of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. According to polls, the Liberal Democratic Party and its ruling coalition partner Komeito could win more than a majority of the seats on Sunday's house election in the country. Some 125 seats were at stake in this election day out of the 248 seats of the upper house of parliament, which are elected in peril for a six-year term. If the ruling coalition were to win 82 seats, as projections suggest, it would have a free hand to declare a referendum on a change to Japan's constitution. In France, authorities warn of the arrival of high temperatures in the country from Monday, July 11th, with readings of up to 38 and 39 degrees Celsius in the west and south. According to France's National Weather Service, a severe heat wash could return to the country after the early heat wave that hit in mid-June, with the vast majority of departments placed on red or orange alert. Meanwhile, they warned that several territories such as Huron, Ternan et Geron, Land, Gard and Vaucluse could record the highest temperatures which will escalate as the week progresses with peaks expected at national level. In view of the forecast, the government has called on the public to stay hydrated and avoid physical exercise and alcohol. Portugal declared a state of contingency amid worsening weather conditions. On Saturday, the country broke the record for the year 2022 with 125 active fires in a single day. The state of contingency is implemented from Monday, July 11th to Friday, July 15th. Fires have been burning in several areas since Thursday, destroying several properties. The blazes follow an intense heat wave in Portugal with the temperatures reaching over 40 degrees Celsius this week and expected to rise in the coming days. The Civil Protection Agency said there were some 1,500 firefighters battling blazes in Orem, Pombal and Carraceda de Anciaes municipalities. More than 700 soldiers were dispatched Sunday after the fires destroyed some 1,500 hectares of vegetation. The fires have injured a dozen firefighters and about 20 civilians. Russian experts say that COVID-19 has become almost indistinguishable from other respiratory viral infections. Natalia Chenichanaya, deputy director of the Central Epidemiological Research Institute, pointed out that the symptoms caused by this disease do not differ greatly from those caused by other respiratory infections. However, she said that if a patient has prolonged symptoms of COVID-19, they should seek professional attention as this could be a sign of a chronic medical condition that the patient may not have been aware of. Several countries around the world are seeing an increase in cases of COVID-19 infections. According to the Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, global infections increased by 30% in the last two weeks. More news coming up after the final short break, so don't go away.
Welcome back to From the South. In Sri Lanka, after the resignation of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe, and two other ministers' political organizations agree on Sunday to form an interim government until new elections are held. Political forces represented by Parliament in Sri Lanka agree to form a government to ensure peace in the country. In that sense, the President of Parliament, Mahinda Japa Abe Wardena, is expected to assume the nation's leadership until new elections take place. The res economic mishandling by the national government. According to sources, these protests have resulted in at least 103 people injured and some 3,000 people arrested. In Israel, studies revealed that more than 50 Arab Israelis have been killed in the country so far in 2022, despite authorities pledged to take all the wave of violence against the community. According to local media, the latest incident occurred overnight on Saturday when a 60-year-old man was killed in a shooting in the central city of Lod. According to a research conducted by the Center for Religion, Nation and State, there are currently 1.9 million people of Palestinian descent, almost 21 percent of the total population of this country, who claim to be treated as second-class citizens. A survey conducted last March revealed that 94 percent of Arabs living in Israel have experienced racism and discrimination from the Jewish majority. Actions that have increased in recent years driven mainly by organized crime amid criticism of police inaction in dealing with the problem. In South Africa, two shootings, one in Johannesburg, Soweto Township, and another in the country's east, left 19 people dead and several injured. In Soweto, police said 15 people were killed as they enjoyed a night out when assailants grew up in a minibus taxi and began randomly firing at bar patrons. In the eastern city of Peter Marisburg, police reported four people were killed and eight wounded during a shootout in a bar after two men fired discriminately at customers. Police sources said it was too early to say if the assaults were in some way connected, but observed their similarity. The incidents come two weeks after 21 teenagers were found dead in a tavern in the city of East London. The cause of those deaths has not yet been announced by authorities, but the teens were not shot nor crushed in a stampede, according to officials. intelligence community are also deployed to can go and collect information and statement from the witnesses and so forth to assist us to crack this case we hope that with the assistance of the community around here sharing the information then we'll be able to can crack this case this is what um, it is right now and wish to call upon communities to actually really indeed assist the police in bringing to book uh, those uh, perpetrators, if they have information of these many quantums, time and again, uchigangapa kalang a quantum, uchigangapa kalang a quantum. If some of those quantums really, uh, uh, our community should actually assist in identifying some of them. The Chinese Navy confirmed joint exercises with Pakistan off the shores of Shanghai as part of its military cooperation. In a brief statement, spokesman Liu Wencheng said that the operation is part of an annual training program and is not aimed at any specific target. He added that the so-called Sea Guardians 2 exercises are aimed at jointly confronting security challenges, strengthening defense collaboration between the two neighbors, and promoting in-depth strategic partnership. These exercises follow a June meeting in Qingdao between senior officers of the two militaries, which serve as an opportunity to reaffirm the will for closer communication, pragmatic cooperation, and bilateral exchanges. The Russian Defense Ministry denounced that civilian infrastructure in the Donbas region is being targeted by the Ukrainian army, using citizens as human shields. The head of the Russian National Defense Control Center, General Mikhail Misensev, reported that militants of the private sector Nationalist Battalion, together with foreign mercenaries settled in the school in the city of New York of the self-proclaimed the next People's Republic. The spokesman claimed that residents of nearby houses were detained by the Ukrainian troops inside the areas of the educational institution, where they, are also, where they also deploy artillery pieces and multiple rocket launcher systems. Missing steps allegations add to multiple allegations from Moscow of the Kiev regime's use 
of civilians as human shields. Telesur English continues to grow. Its signal now reaches Europe. You can order from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on screen are in place since July 1st. Quite soon, for exchange will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other faraway nations. This new small platform will continue providing truth for content to oppose the hegemony media narrative and unfaithfulness to our audience. We have come to the end of this news brief where you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.